This is a video I'm making of my Navian 240S tankless water heater install. Uh, so this is the 240S model. Um, difference between this and the 240A is this one doesn't have a recirculation pump, but it's the, as far as I know, one of the most efficient tankless water heaters on the market, 98%. Um, so this is going to be a recap of my install. I didn't, don't have a time lapse or anything like that, but <clears throat> when I set out to do this on my own, and I'll go into some of the reasons why, um, I had a hard time finding the information I needed in all the parts list, so I'm going to include um, links to all the parts that I used, I had to acquire to install this myself um, in the video and in the description below. So one of the first questions is why tankless? Um, in my case, actually, uh, efficiency was secondary, and that's one of the main reasons people go tankless. Um, I actually live in a townhome with a one-car garage, and we can see here I had very limited space. I previously had a tank water heater, a high-efficiency condensing model in this space here. Um, I wanted to use this space for my bike storage. Um, so now this area is cleared out. Basically, the entire entryway to this closet was taken up by a condensing tank, uh, tank water heater. Um, my goal was to move it over to this area here. So when I started this project, I had no idea about Navian, Navian tankless water heaters, um, but I got three estimates uh, from various contractors here in the Seattle area, ranging from $4,500 up to $9,000 for a complete installation of this unit. Uh, I actually, after getting those estimates, I took a look at online, saw that I could get this same unit for $1,400 shipped to my house, and started looking into DIY install of it. Um, one note I should, one thing I should make note of before we go any further is doing a DIY install, such as I do, did, will void the warranty, um, so I won't be able to get warranty service on this unit from Navian. On the other hand, given that I saved close to $3,000, thousands of dollars on the install, depending on which um, estimate I had gone with, uh, I could replace this thing if it dies tomorrow and I'd still come out ahead by probably at least $1,000. Um, so as far as the estimates, that first estimate that I had gotten from an installer was just to install, remove the old tank water heater from this area and install the tankless unit on the existing half inch gas line. And I'll get into uh, this a little more detail, but that was actually given the length of pipe. Um, the city made me replace the gas line with a one inch gas line all the way to the water tankless water heater. Um, the most expensive estimate at $9,000 was he was going to tear out and do basically the job that I did to replace the uh, half inch and three quarter inch gas line with a one inch gas line all the way back to the meter. Um, so kind of to get into some of the details of the install. Uh, I purchased the service valves. Uh, these are Webstone service valves, 80, just under $80 from Amazon. No problems at all from them, cheaper than the uh, Navian units. So I was able to save um, some money there. Um, for thread sealant, as you can see there, I used a uh, Rector Seal T plus two sealant, um, also from Amazon. Um, so I use this stuff for gas fittings as well as plumbing fittings. Originally, I started out using the yellow tape. Um, I had to disassemble my original. You can see a little bit of yellow tape still there, right here. After the plumbing inspection, he made me tear the original work all out and replace it with one inch gas line as you can see right here down to three quarters originally it had both the furnace and the uh, water heater on a three quarter inch gas line which wasn't sufficient so that was one of my big screw ups regrets in this project um but yeah the rector seal um i was really happy with it you can get the threads coated really well um, there's no guessing really if it makes a seal like sometimes a case with the tape. And I found it was just good to work with. Um, one bottle for all my plumbing needs around the house. Um, the brass pipe, 
Um, I chose to go with Brass Pipe because you can install it completely with hand tools. Um, this is from Merit Brass off Amazon, so I was able to get custom links um, where I needed them. Um, also for some of the brass piping, my original um, tank water heater was installed using some brass, so like this fitting here, and my expansion tank was from the original tank water heater, uh, as well as some of these T-fittings. So I was able to recycle some of those, um, order the custom sizes I needed so I didn't have to worry about soldering copper. These are also really solid, um, thick brass, I kind of like the look of them. Um, fittings as well, these use Home Depot and PEX is running all the way. Um, this behind the insulation here is also brass. I just covered this up after I passed inspection to retain some energy. Um, so the PEX lines actually, this is one of the things I am looking to do different. Um, so I used a brass fitting. You can just get these at Home Depot. I think I ordered these angle brackets, the, the PEX. Um, to PEX fitting, uh, barb fitting um, off Amazon, but it's just easy to get those at Home Depot. Um, one of my regrets, I think, was just, I prefer just to get all the fittings I possibly need at Home Depot and then just return them later. So those lines come over here to the original um, plumbing. Uh, one of the things I'm considering reworking on this one, um, instead of running this extra 10 to 12 feet of line through the wall, um, you just tap into the household plumbing line here when I had to redo the or when I had to run the CPVC um, which I'll get into in just a second I saw that the actual uh, plumbing lines ran right through this wall um, so I'm planning to cut out the drywall hopefully shorten my plumbing lines a bit um, this expansion tank right here is from my previous uh, tank water heater install um, Actually, Seattle Plumbing Code doesn't require this for tankless units, um, since you don't have a closed circuit the way you would with a tank where water is expanding uh, in, the, in the hot water line when the faucets are shut, since it's only heating water when the faucet's on. Uh, the reason I installed this is I'm planning on installing a recirculation pump uh, in my upstairs bathroom, which is three stories up. Uh, in that case, you need, uh, it's best to have a expansion tank here to release the load from thermal expansion on the, the plumbing system. Uh, other things we have here, so we have the uh, pressure relief valve coming off the webstone um, service valve. So this extra pressure relief valve comes comes with the set. It's under $80, I believe. I'll include a link to it, along with the Merit black Brass and the angle fitting. Um, this is one of the things I had to redo after my inspection. Originally, I had this going straight to a PEX line because I had a bunch of PEX tubing that I had purchased, um, which isn't allowed um, by, you know, I don't think any plumbing code because of the thermal properties. Um, PEX isn't rated for the temperature of the water or steam coming out of the pressure relief valve. So this has to be CPVC. So I had to redo that part after the inspection. This is one of those things where I wish I had known or um, even searching through the um, plumbing code, it's hard to get all those details. But it wasn't a big deal just to rerun this. All was packed, so I was able to, to go around here, tie into the original pressure relief line, which goes out the front of the property. Um, so that was that was really easy to do. Um, what else we have here? Um, so I have a condensing gas furnace and a condensing gas water heater. So I had an existing uh, um, Beckett pump, which this will actually pump um, any water condensed from the furnace or the tankless water heater uh, to the outside. Um, so I just used some PEX piping for that, just tied right into the outlet um, via barb fitting uh, of the Navian unit. Um, intake and exhaust. So actually I just had an angle bracket. Um, this is all two inch PVC. Um, so Navian actually sells this or includes this screen right here. So it was just a matter of getting the angle bracket. Um, I didn't want any off chance of anything falling straight in. So I went ahead and just added an elbow there. Um, I had an existing um, two inch exhaust for the tank water heater, which went across to the other utility, other closet 
on the other side of the wall there. So I was able to just cut that off, tap right into it here. Um, so I was pretty happy with this install. So this is another thing. It's best just to pick up a bunch of fittings and angle, angles, um, angle couplings at Home Depot. So you get the ones you want and return the excess. Um, so that was pretty easy to take care of. Um, so what else do we have here? Oh, of course, the most important part, the gas line. Um, so I used a flex hose, flex coupling. This is one of the first things I bought, actually. If I was doing it over again, since if I knew how much uh, Schedule 40 pipe I'd be running, steel pipe I'd be running, I would have just run steel pipe all the way to the uh, tankless unit. So originally, as I said, um, my tank water heater was on a half inch gas line the furnace is also on a half inch gas line they're both fed by a three quarter inch gas line um actually one of the one of the estimates i got was to just install the navian unit on the half inch gas line which they're rated up to 24 feet problem is my plumbing line's closer to 50 or 60 feet back to the meter um so after the inspector came in um he didn't approve it based on undersized line so i had to go through and rip out the original three quarter inch line so that was you know coming over I, I originally ran it over to here but the gas line ran this is the original hook in point which was originally half inch and three quarters or three quarters to half inch um, here so to tear it all out replace it with a one inch up here through the ceiling and tear apart my garage rip out insulation here I did install and replace the existing trap and then this part's been covered up but I also had to pull apart my HVAC ducting uh, to install a one inch line to get everything done so that's another thing I really didn't do my homework um, the size of piping that would be required um, probably if I was doing it all over again I would have just gone with probably a Navian 180S or 210S which have a lower BTU rating and would would have probably slid right under the BTU limit um, for the length of gas pipe that I have. Um, I've had no problems with this thing so far on either the three quarter or one inch gas line, but I haven't been running the furnace hard. Um, so what else do we have? Probably two, some of the tools that I acquired and I'll include links to these, which were really helpful for this job. So this is an eye crimp set that I used for all my PEX fittings. Um, also, some of the fittings I used for shark bite. Um, so this is one of the shark bite reamer tools. I'll include links to these. So this was really handle all in one, handy all in one set. Um, I like these better than the push to connect fittings. Just the crimps. Um, I had an existing. Uh, this is grand granddad's pipe wrench that I inherited, and I don't know who he inherited it for from. They worked pretty well um, when I was undoing the original fitting to go from the one inch gas line to three quarter inch gas line i could have used probably a 14 inch wrench in order to get it undone i had to um, use a heat gun as well as uh, extended breaker bar on the end of this thing um, i probably if i was doing it again i would have just gone and bought a nice 14 inch milwaukee uh, pipe wrench there's some Nipex pliers that I got. They're just super handy for getting into tight places. Have tons of grip. Um, Nipex uh, Cobras, these are called. So I'll include the links to these. They're just super handy. You can read a bunch of videos uh, on YouTube about these. That's how I got turned on to them. Easier to use than a pipe wrench, I think, for, for a novice like me. Um, so one of the things for actually testing your gas installation, you're going to want a... Uh, pressure test gauge, so a city of Seattle, they wanted me to pressure test it at 15 PSI on a gauge that reads at least 30 PSI. Um, the gauge at Home Depot that I originally bought only went up to 15 PSI. So I include, I purchased this winter's one from Amazon. I'll include a link to that. Um, and it's also attached to, uh, you can see the pipe markings I've had to attach it and unattach it a few times. Um, but it's also threaded up with the uh, Rector CLT plus two, that's right here. And also I got a, just for it to be on the safe side um, after the 
original pressure test, um, I got a gas leak detector, which has been pretty useful. Um, I have a Makita air compressor, so you could theoretically pump up your entire gas line with a bicycle pump. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend in, investing in a air compressor. Um, I really like this Makita unit. I used to have like a Husky unit and, and there was like a 40 gallon upright. Um, dealt with it for years. Uh, this thing's like sewing machine quiet in comparison. So, and it just pumps up super fast. I've been super happy with it. So I think that covers about everything. Um, some of the regrets I had, um, I kind of already went over. Um, doing my homework on the gas pipe sizing, probably buying the smaller Navian, save myself a couple hundred bucks um, so that I could get in with the BTU requirement and not have to spend a day tearing out drywall, replacing three quarter inch gas line with one inch gas line. Um, would have saved me some money and a lot of time, um, quite a bit of money because it was another two, three hundred dollar trip to Home Depot to buy all the new pipe. Uh, there you at um, the way I did it. So this is also one of the ways um, one of the estimates I had proposed was running a water line from here over to the old installation. Um, so I'm planning to try and just tap into these lines right in the middle. I believe the way my uh, water lines are laid out, I have this way and um, there's a line running this way going to my guest bathroom and a line going this way to the left going towards my kitchen faucet. So I'd like to take probably a good 15, 20 feet off this line. Um, and the reason for that is one of the downsides I found with this not tankless unit over my tank unit is it takes a bit longer, I would say maybe five, 10 seconds longer to get hot water to any of my faucets. I'm planning to install the tankless unit, but I think a big part of the problem is just this extra plumbing line. So I'm thinking my PEX line runs right through here. I can just cut a hole and tap right into it um, the way I believe that plumbing is laid out. Um, so being able to take a good 15 feet off my hot water line should increase the amount of time it takes to get um, hot water. Um, also, I think installing a tank with, or a recirculation pump should help out a lot with that. So I'll do another follow-up video on that if people are interested. Um, I bought a recirculation pump off Amazon for pretty cheap that had pretty good reviews. I'm going to be installing it to a smart outlet. So I think that's it for this install. Let me know if you find this helpful, if you have any other questions or anything you'd like me to go over. Thanks for watching.